There are lots of ways to train a voice. Some work, some not so well. What's the evidence that a vocal training method works? If a room full of vocal coaches were to watch a great singer or speaker perform, even if they had never worked with that vocalist, they should see their teaching in that performance. In other words, the evidence is that the method works in practical vocal performance situations. Hi, I'm Judy Rodman. Let me tell you about my vocal training process. My ultimate teaching North Star is to help you get the strongest responses to your sung or spoken messages, which you deliver with power and authenticity, but without strain. I developed a highly successful three cornerstone method to do this by combining the synergy of efficient breath, open throat channel, and communication skills. I call this method power, path, and performance. Let me explain. Power refers to the breath that powers the voice, specifically the inhale and two opposing parts of the exhale, breath support and breath control, which need to be balanced for a voice that's both strong and strain-free. To get this right, I teach you to power your voice from your pelvic floor instead of high in your chest or shoulders. Path refers to the voice path that runs through an unobstructed, changeable throat channel instead of a tight, restricted one. This gives your voice access to more color, resonance, and range, and also protects your voice from strain. You're gonna love the results of learning to pull instead of push your voice to get this right. Performance refers to communication skills. The first thing I teach you here is why you have a voice in the first place. To communicate messages to the heart your words or lyrics are directed to. As my students can tell you, the results of reorienting your voice's main goal to getting a desired response from that one heart can be stunning. Now for a question I hope you're asking. Why should you trust me to train your voice? The techniques you'll find in my courses are ones that I've used in a successful, multi-pronged vocal career for over 50 years. My students have used these techniques, performing on the biggest stages in the world, including primetime TV, such as The Today Show, Tonight Show, Letterman, The Voice, American Idol, America's Got Talent, and all the major award shows, including the Grammys. Some speakers I've trained have authored books that have ended up on the New York Times bestseller list. I myself have sung in just about every situation you can, from clubs and songwriter rounds to touring as opening act and headliner in stadiums, festivals, and in front of major media cameras, including shows like The Tonight Show. I've logged thousands of hours in the recording studio on both sides of the glass as performer and as producer. And I work with other production teams as vocal producer. I've sung on legendary hits and had number one records as a signed recording artist, as studio producer, and as songwriter. As public speaker, voiceover talent, and vocal coach, I've learned the secrets for a powerfully effective and healthy speaking voice. There are not many vocal mistakes that you could make that I haven't made, nor nightmare scenarios that my voice hasn't experienced. I know what it feels like not to have the voice that you need for the song you have to sing or the speech you have to give. I've experienced vocal strain, range limitations, terrible register breaks, subtle pitch problems, and serious vocal damage. But with good information, my voice was able to overcome everything and then go on to even bigger career successes. Because of my extensive professional experience with what works for me and my widely diverse students, you can trust my training because it works. So how can it work for you? Let's explore that in video two of this course, how your voice improves. I'm ready when you are. Okay, let's talk about the process of vocal improvement. First, the time frame. 
As you study one of my courses, you should notice that your voice improves in two time frames, immediately and continually. You'll improve immediately when you first speak or sing with a better technique. You may not be able to confidently repeat the given technique, but you should notice that when you do repeat it, you like the results. So you can commit to learning it and you trust the process. You'll also improve continually as certain muscles, tendons, ligaments, and other tissues become stronger, more flexible, and more coordinated and healthier in general. Barring physical health problems, your voice can just keep getting better. Each new level of ability creates the ability to go on to the next level. Second, let's talk about stages. Stages of vocal improvement to look for include discovery, healing, maximization, maintenance, and protection of your voice. You discover more voice than you thought you had. Your potential of upper and lower range, easing of strain, rich tone, control of pitch, and so much more are probably things that are unknown to you. Most people are surprised at the vocal ability they're capable of and of how quickly improvement can happen. Vocal irritation, strain, or damage can begin to heal. Healthy vocal techniques should stop vocal abuse in its tracks. Most people don't realize that with the right techniques, singing and speaking can leave your voice feeling better, not worse, even after long periods of use. Only your body should get tired, not your voice. Sometimes you need a period of vocal rest to heal, but most of the time an irritated, tired, or even damaged voice can respond rapidly and issues can usually be resolved without surgery and other invasive medical intervention. That said, if you have any suspicion that your voice might be damaged, you should get checked out by an otolaryngologist or ENT. You don't want to mess around and miss something serious that needs medical intervention. If possible, go to a fellowship trained ENT who specializes in voice. Okay, let's talk about the stage where you maximize your vocal ability. You know, there's a reason most professional voices like athletes have coaches. When you use the right techniques, you can create your strongest, most controlled and effective voice possible. And then, as I said previously, keep raising the bar on max voice as you go. Your voice is protected and your vocal stamina stays strong. Your vocal cords, also called vocal folds, are so tiny, just a half to three quarters of an inch long. The right vocal training can protect them from strain and injury, no matter what kind of music that you want to sing or how long you need to talk. The right practice will keep your vocal stamina at the level that you need for strain-free performances. So how can you internalize your new vocal techniques? Very much like learning any athletic skill, you need to learn new vocal techniques, both consciously and by developing muscle memory for them. With your conscious mind, you become aware of your strengths and weaknesses. You explore and experiment with new information. When you try something and notice that it helps your voice feel and work and sound better, you know that you can trust that technique and then you can commit to the next step. With your subconscious mind, you develop muscle memory for the new techniques. This occurs when neurons in your brain fire in a certain sequence enough times that a myelin sheath highway is wound around the pattern, making the action super fast and automatic. That's why they say perfect practice makes perfect performance, and also why it's so important to practice as mindfully and correctly as you can. Every time you sing or speak, you're building your myelin sheath highway, creating your autopilot of habits. If you want to change something, don't allow yourself to practice the old way that doesn't work. Let that old muscle memory fade, and it will. Another effective strategy for your training is to begin watching and listening to other singers and speakers. Can you observe the concepts you're studying at work or not at work in others' voices? How is their performance affected? You're not judging them. You're just becoming aware of technique 
what's working and what isn't. Next, let's discuss my tools. I use the tools of anatomy, imagery, and vocal exercises to train your conscious and subconscious minds. Some basic anatomy will give you an awareness of how the body actually works with or against the voice. Then we can effectively use the second tool, imagery. Imagery is just mind pictures and metaphors that help your anatomy do the right thing. Different images work for different people. Experiment with them. Narrow it down to the images and metaphors that seem to work for you and help put you on autopilot. You may end up even creating your own imagery, and that's great, whatever works. Vocal exercises, also known as vocalises, help turn your conscious changes of technique into subconscious muscle memory that will run on automatic and free your mind for performance. You can practice exercises silently to train your mental processes, but of course you need to practice audibly to strengthen, coordinate, and create flexibility in your vocal apparatus. Okay, that wraps up your introduction to how I train and how you learn. Now check out the courses I offer and start a lesson today. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments here, or you can always reach me by emailing judy at judyrodman.com. Happy practicing.